Well, how did you learn about the evils of nuclear power? What, what did you read, or who had an influence on you very early, Dave Freeman? Oh, I, I learned this the hard way. Uh, you, you know, uh, the people say that uh, wisdom comes from experience, and, uh, and experience comes from lack of wisdom, and I've had a lot of experience. Uh, I started off my life as a advocate. Uh, I applied for TVA's uh, nuclear program as a young engineer because it was pictured as the wave of the future. And then I was one of the first persons in the federal government with an energy responsibility, and I, uh, I saw that our research work was just centered entirely on nuclear power. I went called a uh, cross-cutting meeting of uh, all the agencies and showed the director of the budget that nuclear power was getting 95% of our research dollar and there was nothing on solar and very little even on coal research. It was mostly all nuclear. And he said, well, I can't do anything about it. I'll have to deal with these agencies one at a time. And at that moment, I decided that we needed to... Uh, Department of Energy, or leaned some place where we could uh, look at these things rationally, and uh, basically, uh, I got into the Carter administration, and even then, you know, I learned enough to be. I began to be skeptical. I was not anti-nuclear when uh, Carter appointed me to the TVA. Really, uh, but no, I, I wasn't, and. Initially, we were building this armada of nuclear reactors. I gave John Stennis a letter who tried to stop my confirmation, and I promised him that I would complete the Yellow Creek nuclear plant. And then when I got in there, and after a few years, uh, and we got our conservation programs going, and I realized all of the problems with nuclear power, especially what to do with the waste uh, spent fuel and all, uh, I became skeptical. But let me tell you the thing that really drove me to shut those plants down. I have to be honest. It wasn't uh, the pure safety issue at all. It was it was causing rate increases. Uh, these things were coming in way over budget, and, and our conservation program was working. And I went back to Senator Stennis and told him I had to shut down Yellow Creek, even though uh, uh, I'd promised I wouldn't. And he understood. He's a, he was a bigger man than people think. And he looked at my numbers, and he, he said, well, you're right. He said, you got to do it. So I shut those plants down, and I still wasn't, uh, you know, emotionally or any other way anti-nuclear. I just, they just cost too much. And, but then I went to Sacramento, and I, where the people had voted down a plan, and I had the job of decommissioning, and I, I began to realize that this thing was even expensive after it was dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and then the thing that turned me around is in 91, I took a trip to Chernobyl. Yeah. And when, and you know, seeing is believing. Yeah. When you go out there and you see a tombstone with the names of 10 villages on it, and they're all dead, and the land is all dead, and, and I went out on into that desecrated area and there were a few old people still living there when i told them about the ideas of solar power and things like that and they started crying it just hit me that this stuff is just unbelievably deadly mm. uh, and and so after that uh you know I, I began to realize that we were dealing not with something that was too expensive to use but it was just too dangerous and and so it was it wasn't Chernobyl itself, but it was going and seeing. And that's why I think if we could get a bunch of people to actually go to Japan and see what's happened, that that might help too. Well, Senator Wyden went from Oregon, and he was absolutely I know. devastated. Yeah, he, had, he, he reacted the same way I did to Chernobyl. Yeah, well, there's been a huge cover-up of... But, but before this hour is over, I do want to say a bit more on the positive side. Please do. But the solar technology is now uh, become nearly cost competitive. 
uh, with, with fossil fuels. The Chinese are selling solar modules at less than a dollar a watt, and and I think the price can uh, can come down even a bit more. And the large wind turbines are there. This technology is cost effective. Uh, we need to get the word out that the renewables on a life cycle basis are are cheaper, and they're certainly cheaper if you put any value to the survival of mankind on this earth. And uh, somehow or another, in America at least, uh, the the good guys have stopped even making that point. I don't hear the words climate change or, or, or renewable energy uh, being advocated. And uh, so I'm groping for some new ideas. One of them possibly is to get all the green states to form a green compact and, and adopt common laws that would simply, you know, what's wrong with outlawing new coal plants and new nuclear Absolutely plants? Absolutely they should be outlawed. Absolutely. And, and what's, wrong, what's wrong with a law that says when a coal-fired plant gets 40 years old, it, it, it's time to retire? Yep. Uh, and, and that way we can, over, we can make the 2050 go. But we've got to start getting carbon going down this year and next year. Yes. I am impatient with people just adopting big goals 20 years away oh, and doing nothing I am to too. achieve them. Yep. And we've gone through five years of that. Yep. Where we, where, and there's too many people bragging in the environmental movement about what they've accomplished to just get more money out of people when they haven't accomplished doodly squat. Yep. And there's too much tunnel vision of people just having their pet little project and being indifferent to the impact it has. You know, there's so many ironies here. Ecology taught us that everything is connected, yet the environmental movement is, is into tunnel vision. Mm. And they're, they're, not, they're not a cohesive, uh, united group anymore. That's right. Well, t- and, nu- I, I, and, nu- and nuclear has been is sort of the uh, been put in the closet. Dave, and we're trying to bring it out. Tell but, people how you can store solar power, solar thermal plants, how you can store wind power, because they keep coming up with base load power, and you can't get that well, from well, renewables. Well, let me tell you, I've run five big major utilities, and a base load power plant. I don't know what language I can use, but it's a pain in the ass. Uh, it runs, all, you have to run it all night long when you don't have much load. Yeah. A util, what a real utility guy wants is dispatchable power, power that you can turn on and off very quickly. Yeah. And, and, and that's not a nuclear plant, and it's not a coal plant. It, it's gas turbines, really, but it's also hydropower. It's also solar and wind. The solar and wind, you will run every minute you can because the fuel cost is zero. Mm. The marginal cost is zero. And what what people forget is that Hoover Dam was very expensive when it was built. But today it's one mil power because it's depreciated. It's still working. There's not a solar panel on this earth that's ever worn out. They de- they degrade a little bit, but there's some in SMUD that were built in the 80s that are still doing fine. Uh, and over the life cycle of the plant, as you depreciate the w- solar and wind project, it gets lower in cost, whereas uh, certainly uh, the fossil fuels um, don't seem, are, are not going to get lower, and, and they have fuel costs every time you use them. So we have not made the case for the renewable resources that need to be made with vigor and with knowledge, and a lot of the politicians seeing that the going has gotten tough, they've got going. Shut up. And they're not pushing it. And do you work do you work with do, James need, Hansen? Do you work closely with James Hansen, Dave Freeman? No, I don't work closely with him. He he is sounding the alarm and they've been sounding the alarm for some time. What we need are more people that are sounding yes. the positive message that there is an answer. It's an insurance policy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I I go with the climate change a bit different uh, than these so-called experts. I, I tell an audience this. 
you know, I don't know 100% for sure what the impact of climate is going to be. The scientists say that it's going to have a devastating impact, but I don't know for sure. But neither do you. Now, that makes this a risk. And what does a businessman do when they have a risk? I don't know I'm going to die next year, but I take out insurance in case I might. And we don't, and we have good reason to believe that climate requires it. And the insurance policy will simply clean up the air in the cities and prevent asthma and lung disease and stuff like that. So let's just take out the policy. You're you're very inspiring, Dave. We've we've almost reached the end of our time, but you're so inspiring. I want to get on the next plane from Sydney and fly over to Washington D.C. and work hand in hand with you to uh, evoke this revolution. And I think we could do it. I do. Well, I I live at uh, right in downtown D.C. now, and I'm 15 minutes from Reagan Airport, 45 minutes uh, from Dulles. So I'll be looking for you. Uh, you can just <laughs> knock on my door at midnight. At any time, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dave, it's been and we'll, we'll invite We'll invite Arjun over to chaperone. That's, and he can take <laughs> us out to an Indian dinner. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a great Indian restaurant right around the corner from where I live. Oh, yeah. I love even, Arjun, even Arjun said it was the best he'd ever uh, seen in D.C. Well, that's very high praise for Arjun. Yeah. Yes. Well, I good think, to talk to you. Yeah, good to talk to you, Dave. So let me know when you're coming. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye okay, bye. Bye. My guest today on If You Love This Planet was David Freeman, who served as an advisor on energy and the environment to Presidents Johnson, Nixon, and Carter. And unfortunately, I didn't get to ask him about President Nixon, which I was on the tip of my tongue. But he talked so much, and it was so fascinating that I. I couldn't interrupt to talk about President Nixon. Anyway, thanks for listening today, everyone. It's been great. very A lot of fun and very inspiring. Um, if you want to support us, go to ifyoulovethisplanet.org and please donate because we have to keep going. We have to keep going. This is such an important radio program. Education is the key. As Jefferson said, an informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion. This is about informing. Thanks for listening again. We'll be back with you next week with another fascinating show. Bye for now.